All that God requires of us is an opportunity to show what He can do. One bright and thankful look at the cross is worth a thousand morbid, self-condemning reflections. Once I tried to use Him, now He uses me. When you cannot rejoice in feelings, circumstances or conditions, rejoice in the Lord. All that God requires of us is an opportunity to show what He can do. One of the first signs of a spirit-filled life is enthusiasm. Temptation exercises our faith and teaches us to pray. Before we can speak God's message, we must learn to listen. The opened ear comes before the opened mouth. Difficulties and obstacles are God's challenges to faith. When hindrances confront us in the path of duty, we are to recognize them as vessels for faith to fill with the fullness and all-sufficiency of Jesus. God is preparing His heroes, and when the opportunity comes, He can fit them into their places in a moment, and the world will wonder where they came from. Our God has boundless resources. The only limit is in us. Our asking, our thinking, our praying are too small. Our expectations are too limited. When God wants to bring more power into our lives, He brings more pressure. He is generating spiritual force by friction. God is not looking for extraordinary characters as His instruments, but He is looking for humble instruments through whom He can be honored throughout the ages. May God so fill us today with the heart of Christ that we may glow with the divine fire of holy desire. This is our high calling, to represent Christ, and act in His behalf, and in His character and spirit, under all circumstances and toward all men. I cannot understand how any man or woman can believe in the Lord's coming and not be a missionary, or at least committed to the work of missions with every power of His being. The greatest need of our agent of every age, the greatest need of every human heart, is to know the resources and sufficiency of God. God's jewels are often sent us in rough packages and by dark liveried servants, but within we find the very treasures of the King's palace and the Bridegroom's love. We must learn to live on the heavenly side and look at things from above, to contemplate all things as God sees them, as Christ beholds them, overcomes sin, defies Satan, dissolves perplexities, lifts us above trials, separates us from the world and conquers fear of death. There are two ways of getting out of a trial. One is simply to try to get rid of the trial, and be thankful when it is over. The other is to recognize the trial as a challenge from God to claim a larger blessing than we have ever had, and to hail it with delight as an opportunity of obtaining a larger measure of divine grace. Begin to rejoice in the Lord, and your bones will flourish like an herb, and your cheeks will glow with a bloom of health and freshness. Worry, fear, distrust, care all are poisonous. Joy is balm and healing, and if you will but rejoice, God will give power. The Christian that is bound by his own horizon, the church that lives simply for itself, is bound to die a spiritual death and sink into stagnancy and corruption. We never can thank God enough for giving us not only a whole gospel to believe, but a whole world to give it to. A friend, said, you were healed by faith. Oh. No, I said, I was healed by Christ. What is the difference? There is a great difference. There came a time when even faith seemed to come between me and Jesus. I thought I should have to work up the faith, so I labored to get the faith. At last I thought I had it, that if I put my whole weight upon it, it would hold. I said, when I thought I had got the faith, heal me. I was trusting in myself, in my own heart, in my own faith. I was asking the Lord to do something for me because of something in me, not because of something in Him.